Hi there, this is Prof. Johan from the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Pretoria. Welcome to my series on the Introduction to Chemical Engineering and Chemical Engineering Principles. The next topic for discussion is squiggly, or the Greek symbol Xi. This symbol is used to describe the extent of reaction. Now, extent of reaction is given by the equation Ni minus Ni0 over Vi, where Ni is the moles of I at some time. And typically, we would say this is at the end of the reaction. And Ni0 is the moles of species I at the beginning or the start of the reaction. The units of extent of reaction is moles reacting, which comes from the units for N. I, which is moles, and Ni0, which is also moles, subtracted to each other, which means moles, divided by the units of Vi, or the stoichiometric coefficient, which reduces to moles reacting. The first thing you should note about squiggly is the fact that I only report C and not the quantity Ci. So let's go back and think about the previous example we did, where we had two moles of CO reacting with one mole of oxygen to form CO2. And let's say we have the system where we feed two moles of CO and one mole of oxygen to the reactor, and out we have zero moles of CO and O2 and two moles of CO2 being formed according to the stoichiometrical chemical reaction. If we now go and calculate the extent of reactions of all these species, we get zero mole of oxygen out, one mole of oxygen in over the stoichiometric coefficient of minus one of the oxygen, giving us a value of one. And for the species CO and CO2, we also have a extent of reaction of 1. This implies that the extent of reaction for all the species in a chemical reaction is exactly the same, whether I refer to the reagents or the products. It should also now become clear why we have defined the stoichiometric coefficient as being negative for reagents and positive for products. Please also note that the stoichiometric coefficient equals to 1 is not always true for reactions at completion. This is the extent of reaction if we feed 2 moles of CO and 1 mole of oxygen and we have the reaction running, running to completion. When you do more of these calculations, you'll understand what I mean. There's also other things we could do with extent of reaction. If we take the equation for extent of the reaction and rearrange it, we can calculate the moles of a species at any time based on the extent of reaction for the reaction multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficient of that species plus the initial moles of that species. This means, looking at our equation again, if we calculate the extent of reaction for the CO2, we can then calculate the moles of O2 anywhere at any time. So if you know the extent of reaction of one species, you can actually use it to calculate the moles of another species at any time based on its moles fed. You can also calculate the moles being fed if you know the extent of reaction and you know how many moles are left at a certain time or at the end of the reaction. There's another thing that the extent of reaction can give us, and that is the change in moles of a species, how much is reacted or how much is being formed depending on whether it's a reagent or a product, if you have the extent of reaction. For instance, by calculating the extent of reaction of the CO, we can then use that to calculate the amount of CO2 that needs to be formed. The extent of reaction multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficient of the CO2 will give us that value. This value gives us the change in species I during the reaction, which can be any one of the species. Extent of reaction is quite a useful tool. It gives us another tool, another equation to use during the calculation of mass balances, something that can be quite useful. I hope you found this video useful. Until next time.